In 1966, Stanford student Bill Pitts made a habit of breaking into buildings on the Stanford campus and exploring the network of steam tunnels that would be made famous in the Tom Hanks movie Mazes and Monsters. In a twist worthy of an 80s movie, he found his way to Stanford's Artificial Intelligence Laboratory. Instead of making friends with a humanoid robot, Pitts managed to convince the university to allow him to log time on the school's PDP-6 computer after hours. Space War, as you may recall, was the first widely shared video game created four years earlier at MIT. Pitts introduced the game to his friend Hugh Tuck, who had gone off to school at California Polytech. They'd visit the lab to play the game whenever Tuck came back to visit, and Tuck came up with the idea that if you figured out how to stick a coin slot on the machine, they could make a bundle charging people to play. Unfortunately, there was no real way to package a PDP-6 computer and terminal in a way that was commercially viable. Another big fan of the game, Nolan Bushnell at the University of Utah, had taken a job at an arcade after gambling away all of his tuition money. This is perhaps one of the most Nolan Bushnell things ever, so remember, as we visit him again and again throughout the history of video games, just how much his reckless habits are responsible for. Late 60s arcades didn't have video games, so the games Nolan was responsible for were pinball and the sorts of electromechanical games that companies like Sega were producing. Nolan Bushnell saw himself as an entrepreneur, and combined his electronic engineering skills and programming education with his experience in the amusement games industry in an attempt to make a coin-op version of Space War. His first attempt was with a relatively inexpensive Data General Nova minicomputer. It lacked the power he needed, so he turned to developing a dedicated computer only capable of running Space War. This worked, and more affordably than Nova had been. His current employer, Ampex Corporation, offered their engineers free parts for use in personal projects. Using his custom circuit board, an old black and white television from Goodwill, and an old paint thinner can to collect the coins, Nolan Bushnell created the first coin-op video game, or at least its prototype. Pitts, meanwhile, had graduated and taken a job with Lockheed. He had noticed that the DEC had released its PDP-11 minicomputer. This was far cheaper than the PDP-6, and he felt like it might possibly implement Tuck's suggestion of adding a coin slot in an economical manner. Tuck's wealthy family provided most of the 20 grand the two needed for prototyping, and he used his mechanical engineering degree to design the cabinet. Pitts, meanwhile, assembled the hardware and programmed the game. As they finished development in 1971, they incorporated as Computer Recreation Incorporated, and christened their new product, Galaxy Game. The power of the PDP-6 allowed them to create a faithful translation of the game. Nolan, meanwhile, had been forced to compromise, dropping the two-player dueling element and the gravitational fields, instead creating a single-player game where the player fought flying saucers controlled by the hardware. The machine had been developed with a co-worker, Ted Dabney, and the pair had formed a company to market their new venture called Syzygy a Greek astrological term referring to the conjunction of three celestial bodies. However, they discovered the name was already in use by a roofing company, so they went with their second choice, a term from the game Go, describing a state where a group of stones is in danger of being taken. Atari. They began shopping the game around to different potential manufacturers, eventually arriving at Nutting Associates. Now, Nutting Associates had been founded by Bill Nutting in 1967, prior to which he'd been working with his brother Dave. The two had been rivals since childhood, and their partnership had been rife with sibling strife. In the mid-60s, Bill had been an investor in Edix, a multimedia company making training equipment for the military and other clients. One of the products created by Edix was a teaching machine called the Knowledge Computer that used a film strip and multiple-choice questions. Another investor had jokingly suggested putting a coin slot on the machine, much as Tuck had with uh, Galaxy Game. In 1965, Bill approached his brother Dave about forming a company to sell a new coin-op version of the knowledge computer called Computer Quiz. The partnership didn't last long, Bill didn't trust Dave's motives, and each brother formed their own company to sell their own version of the machine. Dave formed Nutting Industries in Milwaukee, and Bill formed Nutting Associates in Mountain View. Nutting's follow-up to Computer Quiz, as the machine came to be called, despite not having a computer in it, generally fell flat, so when Nolan Bushnell came knocking, he was of course interested. Not so much in the game, 
but in hiring a new head engineer to replace a few that had left. Bushnell was interested, tentatively, if he could keep control of his project. They hammered out a deal where Bushnell would work at nutting during the day while working for his version of Space War after hours for no pay. When the game was finished, nutting would pay for the manufacturing and marketing, and Bushnell would receive 5% royalty on each unit sold. Eventually, Dabney would come to join Nolan at Nutting Industries, and they called the project Computer Space to go with Nutting's earlier computer quiz. Having heard of Pitt and Tuck's Galaxy game, Nolan took pains to visit them, looking to see if they'd overcome some economic hurdles he'd run into. He left the encounter less than impressed. They were engineers, but Nolan was a businessman, and didn't see that their project, while being technologically impressive, he didn't see that it had commercial potential. In 1971, both teams installed their prototypes in local businesses near Stanford, Galaxy Game in the Student Union, Computer Space in the Dutch Goose just off of campus. Galaxy Game received a lot of attention, but because Pitts and Tuck only charged 10 cents a game, they didn't come anywhere close to breaking even. They made a second improved version, but couldn't justify sinking more money into the project. The Galaxy Game prototype remained in the Student Union until its display processor began to fail in 1979. Likewise, Computer Space performed well enough in its test run that Nutting ordered 1,500 units manufactured. They, however, sold poorly, perhaps because the Dutch Goose had been a tech college bar and less savvy patrons found the controllers too complex. Despite this setback, Nolan Bushnell was only just getting started with Atari. In fact, just the next year he would attend a Magnavox trade show and play a little game called the Odyssey, something that would prompt him to change the arcade industry forever. <laughs> 